Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome back to the Resistance Broadcast. When you think about dramatic Star Wars characters, who comes to mind? I'll give you a second to think. Lacey. Bob. No. no. Bob. Bob. Iger. Bob. <laughs> Bob Iger. Does Darth Vader come to mind? Well, I think so. And we're going to find out if we all think so. And uh, not necessarily like Darth Vader likes drama, but just he's a dramatic character. He likes dramatic entrances, all that kind of stuff. We're going to get into it in our discussion later. Welcome back again. It is the Resistance Broadcast. Happy Thursday to all of you. We have a great show. The Will of the Force is back. And of course, your Resistance transmissions. But first, let's say hello to the crew. James, Lacey, what is going on? I don't know. Uh, oh man, I don't know. I'm kind of interested in this uh, dramatic Darth conversation. It's probably one of the most intriguing ones that we've had in a while. I don't really know if it's going to go over or not. Uh, we'll see. It, it could be like it could be like a three minute conversation or like forty five minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we might. I have a feeling that you guys are going to start saying some stuff, and I'm going to be like, oh, oh, or like, or or or, and then we'll just keep going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then next our, week we do a Kessel run of the most dramatic yeah, Darth Vader The moments. most dramatic, yeah. Uh, how are you, Lacey? <laughs> I'm good. Just chilling. Ready chilling. to talk some Star Wars and talk about Vader and uh, read some transmissions. James, I was just thinking, like, there's a lot of shots of some of the comics I've seen of Vader where he looks like really like emo and stuff mm -hmm. like retros retrospective retroflective whatever you want to call it well all um, he needs to do is hang his head kind of down you know and yeah, then you're like that oh thought that's bubble sad comes. vader that's sad vader right <laughs> um dad vader sad vader all the vaders we're going to talk about all of them um but uh you guys ready to dive in here anything you want to say hello to the uh, people out there about anything like that hi people about that all right hello that covers that. just hanging out Thoughts are with people in Florida. Uh, if yeah, we have any listeners true. in Florida. Oh, yeah. Stay Pan safe. Panhandle. Stay safe, all of you. And we hope uh, we make your Thursday a little better and keep you company here. All right, James, the will of the force. I think we got some good stuff this week, huh? Fire away, sir. All right, cheer it. <laughs> Punch it. I fear nothing for all this as the force wills it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This He's week. like the least likely character to punch it. He'd yeah. give you the greatest a greatest stars. A band of punch, punch it. punch it. He's sitting in the 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 side seat of the Falcon, and Han says, "Punch it!" And he goes, "Are you kidding me? I'm blind." There's <laughs> 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 the wipers <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Will the Force this week? Uh, what is this? Five questions. Yeah. But there's a bunch in the first question, so let's get started. Uh, will we see? The following locations in Star Wars Episode 9. Um, now, the following locations that John listed are Naboo, Jakku, Endor, Octo, and Tatooine. Uh, Lacey, I'm going to start with you. Out of these five, which ones are we going to see and which ones will we not see? I think we're going to see everything except Tatooine. Okay. I think we're going to see Naboo, Jakku, Endor, Octo, but not Tatooine. Uh, That's it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, John, what do you got? This one's tough. Um, I say definitely yes to Jakku. Um, yes to Octo. No to Tatooine. Yes to Endor. And no to Naboo. Oh. Hmm. You know, for me, like when I, f I actually when I was looking over the show notes, I saw this first and my first thought on all of these, cause I feel like they don't go back to the past very often was no, 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 you know, no, 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 no. Just going down the list of all planets that could be brought into episode nine. But then we got that crazy report about, you know, uh, the locations that they might be coming at, you know, and that's like, that's, possibly Jakku, it's possibly Naboo, it's possibly Endor, it's possibly Octo. I think I'm with mm -hmm. Lacey. I think if they go back to some of these, I think we would go back to Jakku for possible big story elements, and then they'll do like a uh, special edition Return of the Jedi, like, what else is happening elsewhere? Look, it's Naboo. Look, it's Endor. Look, mm -hmm. it's, you know, 
Tatooine. I mean, I know she said not Tatooine, but I don't know. I just kind of get this feeling that the Jakku and then Octo might actually have something to play in the story. And then Naboo Endor were like reported locations. I don't know. I'm going to say those. I'm going to say those. I'm going to say all of them. Forget it. I take it back. I'm going to say all of them. I don't know why. I'm feeling it right okay. now, guys. Nice. I'm feeling get the it. will of the force. All right. Next <laughs> question. You know, we may have seen his ship. We see the first order. We've seen Phasma, so it raises the question, will Kylo Ren or Snoke appear in Star Wars Resistance? John, I'm jumping to you because we're going to spend like 10 minutes with Lacey on this question. <laughs> <laughs> Lacey can get to Kylo Ren in one step for yeah, sure. Yeah, we know that. Question. We know that. All right. If you guys listened on Monday, we did a Six Degrees of Kylo Ren segment. So if you didn't catch that, go back and I check was that. pretty was good, pretty though. Pretty witty. <laughs> yeah. I used factual information to get from point A to point B. Long neck. Guys, 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 guys. Uh, no to Snoke, but um, I think... Yep, go ahead. I say it. We, I, th- I, think, I think we will, <laughs> I think we will see <laughs> Kylo Ren. I think we will. You think we will? There was so much pain. Yeah. You guys can't see it because you're not seeing the video, but <laughs> the pain that he went through from like the bottom of his toes, you could see it kind of get up into his shoulders, <laughs> really stressed him out right into his face as he was saying yes. It like, I mm. could see it. Okay. Mm. It was I, tough. It was I th- tough. I think this is going to be kind of crazy because my opinion on this is I think we're going to see Snoke, but we're not going to see Kylo Ren. What? Yeah, Joseph and then I, Snoke Wicca in the Resistance. What? Yes, because I think at some point they're going to say, you know, take this to the boss or something, and it's it'll be pretty easy to get grab Andy Circus for a couple lines and the a little Doctor Claw situation. Yeah, exactly. I think like kind of showing him as uh, someone and maybe in a different position or maybe in the gold robe or kind of a throwback thing or something. But I think it could be really cool, and I I really think that that could add. Um, I always hesitate to use this word levity because le- levity means funny, but it also funny. it just means yeah. But doesn't it also mean just like a change of pace on the the? I don't know. Maybe I'm using it wrong. Um, but it could add weight or gravity to a situation like on certain episodes. Like they might actually go mm-hmm. into some like what are Snoke's plans for the First Order kind of stuff. I don't know, James. The the only reason why I said yes to Kylo Ren is because we we are in the era of masked Kylo Ren, and mm-hmm. you don't necessarily have to get Adam Driver to pop those those uh that vocal track. I think there. he'd you do it. You say anyway. that, but that was part of the reason I thought that we wouldn't see him is because y- you would probably want to get Adam Driver to do the voice, and I do not think he cares at all about the Resistance TV. I show. think yeah, he I does don't... though. He's done the Lego stuff. Know. He's done the other stuff. He did Disney World and Disneyland. I think he does care about it. All right. I think okay. he thinks it's cool. So mm-hmm. before Lacey mm-hmm. jumped in there, I think my vote, well, I'm saying <laughs> I think I think my vote on what she would say is she would say yes to both. Am I right, Lacey? No, I don't think Snoke's going to show up. You don't think Snoke's going to show up? Okay, Mm-mm. so you're with John. All right, gotcha. I think we're going to see Kylo Ren, uh, but not Snoke. And I think Kylo Ren's going to be like a Vader in Rebels. Like you'll see him at the at, like in a finale or something or- some type of big climactic moment you'll see him or something will happen where you'll see him in passing. He's not going to be like a main character of the show. Yeah, I mean, they did that with uh, they did that with Clone Wars back in the day. They'd mm-hmm. be like, hey, mm-hmm. season three, Chewbacca, you know, and hey, they did that with Rebels. Yeah. Like, you know, this <laughs> season we're bringing in Lando Calrissian and Princess Leia yeah. and stuff. And they do those kind of like cameo characters for advertising. And I do think that if the Resistance kind of takes off or, or maybe it doesn't take off and they're just like, hey, maybe we can pull some fans back in by saying this week or this season, we've got Snoke showing up. You know what I mean? People are like, oh, now I feel like I got to watch it, you know? Right. So, like, or it like could kid, be like you could just like hear kids Kylo's voice or something. Yeah. Like if kids aren't buying that red uh, Stormtrooper guy as the main villain, they're like, all right, bring in the big cats. <laughs> bring <laughs> in the go. big cats. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say Snoke is a cat, a hairless cat? Oh, he is. He's, like, he, he's the human version of Doctor Evil's Mister Bigglesworth, post Frozen. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, we got some more Will of Force questions. Claudia Gray is considered by many to be 
the best current Star Wars author. So will Master and Apprentice reveal anything mind-blowing about either Qui-Gon Jinn or Obi-Wan Kenobi that alters how we view them or how we view either of their characters? Or will the book simply show maturation of their relationship as Master and Padawan? John, you use the big words. Can you answer this question? <laughs> what are we going to see in Master and Apprentice? Uh, I it, mind blowing. No, um, if and if they do give us anything new to learn about one of the characters, it's going to be Qui Gon and not Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, we may learn how Qui Gon kind of bucks the system a little more, but I don't think we're going to learn anything significantly major about either one of these characters. I think the sole purpose of this book. Is going to be to enrich that relationship and backdate the for, um, the Phantom Menace, uh, so that we care about that bond more uh, than we did before when we see Qui Gon meet his noble end. Ooh, all right, Lacey, what do you think? Do you agree with John? Yeah, kind of. You know, I think this book is definitely coming at a prime time because of the anniversary of Phantom the Phantom Menace. I think that this is this is going to explore their relationship. Is it going to be giving you anything mind blowing? I don't think so, but it might give you more background on that relationship, which will make his death that much more impactful in the Phantom Menace. Um, and and who doesn't want to see like a hot shot Obi Wan like when he's like giving him a hard time? Because you know he like kind of like bickered with Qui Gon from time mm-hmm. to time. Like I'm excited for mm-hmm. that. And Claudia Gray is like one of the best ones out there. So I'm excited to see her take on it. So this is, you know, we're still kind of in that debate period where it was brought up that this could have something to do with Obi-Wan and uh, Satine. Um, Which I think if, I think if that's new, if that is something they go down that route, then for some people that could be kind of like a lot of new information and it could, you know, kind of give us a different view of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, I think you're right on Qui-Gon, though. I can't imagine they do anything more than maybe, like, giving us a little bit more of that, like, well, you know, maybe this is the reason he's not on the council. It's because he has these specific opinions. But that's something that we already right, kind of know. Right. They're just kind of giving us the, like, actual, this is how it happened story. Like, he so, keeps taking Yoda's parking spot. I know. Dude has <laughs> got to realize his place young Padawan. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of with, I don't think there's going to be anything like super crazy that happens in it. I, I honestly have a feeling that the book is going to be pretty to the T, you know, here's another story mm-hmm. with these characters. Um, will Leia, this is the next one. Will Leia be in a scene with Kylo Ren in episode nine? Lacey going straight to you. Wonder why? Just kidding. You're next. It's I just turn. want it to be known that I didn't write these questions and I didn't yeah, bring them up either time. Um, but I appreciate this. I'm loving it. Um, will he be in a scene? Yes. I think that's why they're bringing her back into this next movie. There has to be some type of closure between him and his mother since he had that moment with his dad. He hasn't necessarily had that moment with his mom. Yeah, they had that like force yeah. moment, but I wouldn't that's really... I thinking, that's but... not a face-to-face. And it's either... It's either got to be like her death or she has to go to him face to face to make some type of progress there. Otherwise, like that's such a missed opportunity. I feel like in storytelling not to have him be back with his mom, especially because the whole Star Wars, some of the tropes are like the father son stuff. So it would make sense if there was also a mother son thing. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I definitely think they will. And I think that they probably already shot that scene and they just haven't shown it yet. So, yes. Don't forget there was Ooh. there was mother son stuff in uh the original or the prequel trilogy with Anakin yes. and Shmi and stuff. Shmi. But, right, um, exactly. But, so then if you're bringing agree, that to the end, right? So if you're bringing that to the end of the nine movies, you're back to that mother son relationship and Anakin turned to the dark side because of his mother. Maybe Leia brings him back or maybe something drives him further. You don't we don't know yet. And speaking of George Lucas being a bad director, (laughs) letting Shmi's head fall backwards was just a bad direction choice. (laughs) That was just a very weird, like, Um, just like, blah. 
But I think they already shot the scene, seriously, for either Last Jedi or Force Awakens. You're telling me they've never had those That's two in a scene together? It's possible. I, uh, I kind of think that Lacey could be right on this, uh, that you know, Leia, hey. w- Leia and Kylo Ren might actually end up in a scene together. I- I'm going to go with that. I do have a-, a question for John. Is Six Degrees of Kylo Ren, how many Will the Force questions can John fit into fit Kylo Ren into. I'm going to go with three. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you know how much I like the character Kylo Ren. Lacey joined the podcast and hijacked that for me. So yeah, that's true. Actually, you were like the main, like Adam driver pusher. Well, according to Lucasfilm, it's my brand. So I have to keep it going. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, Hi, John. We need your thoughts. Will Leia be in a scene with Kylo Ren in episode nine? You know, I was going to say no, but... Um, Clayton said they're using a, footage. Because she'll LGS, be in a scene with Ben L- Solo. Is that why? LGS LGS over here convinced me that uh, <laughs> there is going to be a scene between Leia and Kylo Ren. So the girly I think, show? The girly yeah, show? What, what's that? <laughs> LGS. La girly show. <laughs> Never mind. I don't even know what that it's means. It's a 30 when rock joke. Um, Get out of here. All right. It is a 30 <laughs> rock joke, but he's talking about my full name, guys. My full name is Lacey Giller and Shea, if you didn't know, but fun fact. Right. <laughs> Named after the stadium that was yep. torn down after the Mets because they're such losers, and I'm a loser. Um, therefore, ho oh, hot take. But you, know, but you know who's <laughs> not a loser is Princess Leia, and I do think she's going to have a scene with Kylo Ren now in uh, Episode Nine. I'm sold, folks. I'm sold. I switched at the very last sold. second. I'm gonna cry and so going much once, in Episode Nine. Going twice. Going three times, Leia will be in a scene with Kylo Ren. We got one more Will the Fat. Uh, will the Fat. <laughs> will the Force. <laughs> Assuming it goes beyond one season, will we see the Mandalorian unmasked in the first season? In the first season, this guy's going to take his mask off. I'm going to say no. And I think it's Ooh. because I think it's because they they know that being masked is what makes that dude awesome. Okay. That's what makes him mysterious. I'm pulling the, uh, what's the show? Um, uh, oh, Dread. They had Carl Home Urban. Improvement. Yeah, <laughs> Home Improvement, that's right. They never showed the bottom part of his face. <laughs> you never seen Wilson's <laughs> face. Yeah. So it's Didn't like Mandalorian's always going to have a picket fence. It's yeah, a, the Mandalorian's going to have a picket fence at his house, and you're not going to be able to see the bottom so of his face. So it's the exact opposite of that. In Home Improvement, you couldn't see the bottom of his face. In Dread, you couldn't see the top of his face ever. Right. Yeah. Um, no, but Carl Urban never took his mask off, and I think that's because uh, they just said that's not the character. The character leaves his mask on, and that's important. Uh, are we ever going to see uh, Captain Phasma's face? No, you know that it. As much as you had this character involved, uh, or as much as you had this character uh, played by a great actress, you know, you they never took the mask off because that's the character doesn't. They take only the mask showed her eye. And, yeah, so I, I have a feeling that they are going to play this card. Like that final episode is going to be like the Mandalorian walking away from a, an explosion, and it's just going to be like, "Come back next season," because he's just <laughs> walking away. And he's got his helmet on, and he's just like awesome. And you're like, "Dude, that just dude rules." I don't know who he is, but he's the Mandalorian. So, what if it's the ending like The Matrix, where he just like jetpacks into the sky and just <laughs> yeah. like flies by the camera? Yeah, <laughs> hangs up the phone. <laughs> At a phone booth. He's at a phone booth and he <laughs> yeah. hangs up, yeah. All right, John, what do you think? Do you think he's going to take the mask off? Uh, I'm going to say he will. Um, he will. And the only reason, yeah, the only reason behind that is I think Favreau is definitely a character-driven um, type of uh, uh, creator. And in order to really get us to um, empathize and, and really get behind this character is to get to the human side of them. So if you leave the mask on, you kind of keep a wall up between the audience and the character. And if he's the main character, it's different than Phasma, who's kind of a side character. I get keeping the mask on that. But look at Kylo Ren. They took the mask off because they really had to get us into his soul, right? Um, so John, the same we get type it. Of thing you here. like Kylo Ren. God. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. I love him. And there's and then, ding, ding, ding. That's three for me. <laughs> that's three. So so, so I, think, I think the... <laughs> <laughs> so I think the mask is going to come off for that reason, just to uh, get us closer to that character as our main character. Uh, and um, it, it won't be off for, you know, 
chunk big chunks, but I think it will from time to time. All right, Lacey, you're up. Mask off, Mandalorian. Yeah, I think he's going to end up taking his mask off, he or she, Gosh, you guys. at least once, if not multiple times, because like John said, you have to create that human connection with the character, and you can't do that if they're constantly wearing a mask. Plus, it's doing Boom. a disservice for the actor, because you won't be able to, in high emotional scenes, to be able to see the acting, because they'll be in a mask, so I'm sure they'll want to give that person the screen time, the screen time they deserve. That's a great point too, actually. Yeah, you guys have like absolutely positive points. I just think if they're gonna take <laughs> a risk, if they're gonna take a risk on having a character that is just like a masked character, because star in Star Wars they wear helmets, they wear masks. Right, right, right. Um, this could be setting the precedent. And uh, Boba Fett never took his mask off, and people loved him. So, can we write a story around Boba Fett without him taking his mask off? Yes, let's do it. The Mandalorian. Doesn't have to be Boba Fett. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying Max's right, character right, right. story based. Boba on Fett's so. not a Mandalorian. But it's not a Mandalorian though. I said that too. Hey, I was one of those people that's like, does John Favreau know? I'm sure he does. But yeah, dude, right. James, dude, 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 James, dude, dude. Boba Fett is from the Obi Wan long hair planet <laughs> with, the <laughs> with the long, long neck, neck lady. lady. With the and long it rains neck all the time. <laughs> like Boba Fett. I, I love saying Boba Fett in that voice. Boba Fett. <laughs> hey John, <laughs> quit being so dramatic. Hey, oh, look no. at that segue. <laughs> you know, I, I I take after the best, James. What can I say? And who better to take after than the most dramatic Sith Lord in the galaxy? So why don't we hop into this discussion here, huh? Obi Wan once thought as you do. <laughs> it's like you guys, right, guys. just virtually high fived. Over the yeah. chat. <laughs> yeah. I like how you're not thinking about how the discussion intro is the Darth Vader like, Obi-Wan once thought as you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it fits. All right. So, guys, we are kind of pitching this as how dramatic is Darth Vader? Now, for the most evil Sith Lord in the galaxy, I think Darth Vader is pretty dramatic. From his smoke slash steam required entrances, appearing out of the dark, to trapping his guests inside dining rooms, to his quips and statements, his puns. Everyone's favorite Sith, Sith Lord sure has a flair for the dramatic. And I don't just mean, oh, he loves drama. That person loves drama. I just mean overall, uh, dr just a dramatic character, a flair for the dramatic. So let's just have some fun and talk about this. Uh, guys, how dramatic is Darth Vader? Lacey, how I'm just dramatic thinking of the is Darth Vader? <laughs> I think he's pretty dramatic. I mean, I'm just thinking of like Rogue One where he lights up the saber. Like that's the best part of the whole movie and everybody knows that. I remember when that came on the screen in the movie theater, I was like, oh my God, it's happening. I was like so <laughs> excited. But probably the funniest thing you just brought up, John, which I totally agree with, is the dinner scene where he's like, won't you join me for dinner? Like, they're sitting at we the dinner. We would be honored if you would join us. <laughs> like, how like, ridiculous is that? This is the guy that you want to catch, and here's the girl that got away from you that are, like, the rebel people, and you're like, ah, yes, take a seat. Let's chat this one out. Like, yeah. what? You could have just Don't killed them and left. Like, how many <laughs> lines do you think he practiced? Like, no, I need them come alive. on in. <laughs> Come on in. The plates are warm. Like, he was like He's in his ship practicing. He's like, no, no, no. Try that again. Uh, there's, it's, is it hot in here or is it just, I mean, no, dim. <laughs> or is it they just you, him. my daughter? <laughs> like, oh, oh, this is weird. Yeah. They probably warned him like, all right, the door's about to open. Get behind that, uh, that, uh, that chair there. Yeah. He's like, okay, okay. <laughs> that's the that's the thing that I have always thought was kind of funny is uh, number one, he's uh, Darth Vader is always super confident and they write him that way. But I don't think that any normal person could be that confident all the time, because sometimes I find like whether it's in the comics or the books or anything like that, they put Darth Vader in situations where I'm like, there's no way you would know. But he's just like, I'll destroy them. Like, you don't know what you're going up against, you know, or I don't mm -hmm. know. It, or the choke on your aspirations. Like, yeah, really? They, they always seem to put him into situations because they know where the story's going and they know that he's just going to be like, 
I don't know, like he'll just jump in the water and then like swim down and like, you know, stick his lightsaber in the thing. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. Anakin was kind of like that. But if you were to put the suit on Anakin in like late Clone Wars or something, like I think you get, that's not Darth Vader. Like I think his personality changes too where he stops talking so much. Like in the books, for instance, like in Thrawn Alliances, Darth Vader talks a lot. But in the movies, he doesn't talk that much. He's very like stoic in the sense of like yeah. somebody talks yeah, to absolutely. him and then he has like one line that is like, dang, he just owned me with like five words. But <laughs> in in the books and stuff, he talks a lot and he has like full on conversations, but yet they still try to make him stoic. So all of his sentences are like, no. You know, like, <laughs> well, he, I like, will Peter destroy them. Like, like he's always like, good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm Whenever saying. Whenever he gets good news, it's good. I just and feel like, great, good. Like you said, like the first time we see him actually being badass is like in Rogue One when he lights that lightsaber and destroys that hallway of dudes. Like before and that, he just said a couple things. He'd be like, "Where are the plans?" And then he'd walk away, yeah. and you'd be like, "That's and it." Lacey, Think about that whole scene and how he, like a play director, built it up. He's like, okay, I'm going to close the door. I'm going to shut all the lights off. And then I'm just going to go. I'm, I'm, I'm turning my chest plate lights off so they can't see that. Let me cover that. <laughs> and then slowly do my 45 degree angle slow lightsaber extend. And he's like, oh, this is going to be so good. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, if, dramatic entrances. honestly, if I he was him it. and I had nothing left to, to lose at this point, like Padme's dead, his kids are gone. He's got he's got three half limbs like he's got nothing left to lose. I would totally yeah. mow people down. Just imagine. For yeah. Imagine if Luke Skywalker was actually played by Polly Shore. And he walks what? into that that uh, that scene in uh, Empire, and where uh, what the the chamber, the frozen, the freezing chamber where they start Carbonating. their battle. Yeah. And he walks in, Darth Vader standing up there, and there's all the fog and like the dramatic lights and stuff. I just see Polly Shore being like, "Would you turn on some lights, man?" <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so dark and foggy, like yeah. I, it's well, why Polly like, Shore? Because Luke wouldn't say, "Why don't you turn some lights on in here?" Mm-hmm. Like so, I but picture, the whole thing is I like, why to... does it have to be dark? Why is he sneaking up on Luke? Luke knows he's there. Yeah, yeah. like that's a that's he's a not thing. a it's light like, breather. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me change it not to Polly Shore. Let me just throw like my wife in there. I know she would say this if if I was standing there and she walked into the room, she would say, "Why are you just standing here in the dark?" <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and I well, think that's also the like key. every time, every time Vader shows up, there's always uh, like a fog machine. He's like, "Did you turn on the fog machine? I'm about to walk out." <laughs> you did. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture the guy from Hey Arnold that's always breathing. That like Helga punches, yeah, when mm-hmm. he's breathing behind mm-hmm. her, and I feel yeah. like they base that character definitely on Darth Vader because it sounds just like him. But like it's that idea, like he creates these scenarios where he's like in the dark or he's sneaking up or he's like, "Your mm-hmm. time has come." Like, why do you have to talk yeah. like that? Just be like, "Hey, man, it's over." <laughs> like, yeah. who else would say something like that? I don't know. Like he he refuses to get on or off a ship unless it has a long ramp. With like a fog machine. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I think you're stuck on the like the theatrical dramatic of it. I just Oh, keep, I am, absolutely. Yeah. I keep I keep trying to picture lines like if they just superimposed or, or they did the exact same scene scene with Anakin, but they put the like suit on him and they did the James Earl Jones voice. I think mm-hmm. that like the lines that he says when he's Anakin have they're longer and they have more of a like back and forth with whoever he's talking to whereas like as soon as he turns as soon as he turns into darth vader he doesn't go back and forth he's just like he just everything he says could be the final statement does that make My sense? Way or the which, highway. Is very, which is a very dramatic <laughs> way to do things like anakin would be like 
but what about this? Or what about this? You know, maybe we should go here. But why but then, not? Like yeah. Darth Vader is just like, we will do this and we will go to that place. And then like walks mm-hmm. out of the room right. and you're just like, yeah. okay, I guess that's. All Imagine we got. how Even angry you have to be. That that's shuttle. your, <laughs> yeah, that's your like thing. Prepare your a boarding party. I feel like the line's a little long. Prepare a boarding party. Yeah. He doesn't say prepare a boarding party. He's like, prepare a boarding party. In yeah. Rogue One. It's a little long. I think that's just because James Earl Jones is 85 now. Yeah, yeah. Just taking that, longer that's to totally deliver it. the lines. Yeah. Um, what about uh, the whole thing, like just how we deliver some lines? Like when, and I know they didn't want to reveal too much because they weren't sure where it was going, but when he's like recognizing Obi Wan's presence on the Death Star, I send something. A presence I haven't felt since. And then he just walks off. <laughs> it's like, since what? Stop being yeah. so damn dramatic. Just tell us. <laughs> He wants people to follow him to to find out what it is. <laughs> Just tell us. The funny thing Since is, like, cut, I'm picturing Since myself. He cut you up on that volcano. Come on, just say it. I'm picturing myself in these scenarios where, like, I'm his assistant, and he'd be like, "I haven't felt," and I'm like, "What? What? What is it? Where are yeah. you going? What? Yeah. I haven't finished my memo." And he's just like walked off. <laughs> Lacey, have you finished your memo? Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Return I've ordered the, the three fog machines. <laughs> like, how about the no screams? The no screams, even the ones they added into no. Return of the Jedi. That's pretty dramatic. Yeah, that's absolutely dramatic. In fact, well, I think it's that plays too into the dramatic space opera thing. for Darth Vader, yeah. and that's why people didn't like it. They're like, this guy is supposed to be so. I'm gonna keep saying it's stoic. Like I think that's kind of exactly what they're yeah. going for. And he's he's going no, and it like takes away no. all of his like manlyhood. I mm-hmm. guess I don't know. Um, well, especially in Revenge of the Sith, I remember first seeing that, and it almost felt like he was growing as he's like bursting all those blood vials and all those things. And the Emperor's like, yes, he's like pure evil now. This is awesome. And he takes his shackles off and he's stomping around. You're like, is he going to like shatter this whole room? And then he's just like, no. Yeah. And then he like, shatters the whole what? room, but doesn't shatter the emperor. Actually, he does yeah, shatter the emperor. Right. I'm just going to throw that out there. I, I had a feeling you wouldn't mention that, but he does in the uh, Vader comic, he does blow the emperor back into the wall. And then the emperor gets up, talks to him for a few minutes, and then uses the force to pin him to the ground and say, don't ever use the force against <laughs> me again. <laughs> not not in that That's scene. That's like his first You're talking about it. It's it, not in the movie. No, but in the it, right. but, but in that moment in like the canon, in the comic book. Yeah. He does actually he gets so angry that he blows the emperor back into the wall and then the emperor Did puts him in his him? place like a few minutes later. Did he blow him over a computer chair like Yoda did? Hey, maybe. Yeah, that's true. We have seen the Emperor kind of in a compromisable situation. Maybe Lucas situation. was like, one, one time's enough. Like, one computer chair tumbles enough. For and then he gets up movie. and he's like, <laughs> I guess I'm just like, I think that's the other thing that always kind of bothered me about Vader is like, you know what? I'm going to go back to this when I was little. When I was little, I never understood why Vader listened to the Emperor. Remember when we were talking about like when we were little, what we thought? I never mm-hmm. understood. I was like, this guy's a grandpa. Why doesn't he just like murder this grandpa and do his own thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's yeah. a good answer to that one. Like, I always thought it didn't make sense why Darth Vader just didn't like push the Emperor off a cliff earlier. Like, <laughs> he could yeah, do so many. Like, true. why didn't you just do it? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good point. Um, Maybe it's just that that mental whatever yeah. you want to call it um, abuse why, grooming. Yeah, yeah, why don't why don't people who are trapped in homes just go out the front door? You know what I mean? There's like yeah, 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 all yeah. sorts of like mental games that they're being. But that's with and- that. There's my answer. Like three weeks later, <laughs> you want to know what little Lacey thought? Why didn't this guy three, just three weeks? That was like n- two months ago. Mess up this old dude just like. <laughs> take on his own thing that's what i thought which is very very angry and like (laughs) bitter for like a second grader just destroy Mm -hmm. him man just get rid of him (laughs) baggage (laughs) i i find i find everything very interesting in terms of his relationship and how he directly relates to uh luke as well like right you have to wonder 
what his approach was when he had that encounter with Luke in terms of like, how do I reveal to him that I'm his father? Like, I wonder if, if Vader had any like hesitation, like n- not necessarily like I want to make sure like he accepts this news well, but just kind of like, how do I deliver this information? And he went with the route that they could overthrow the emperor and, uh, y- you know, join me. We'll rule the galaxy as father and son. And just like he, he always goes for the, like the big epic, like haymaker shots when he's, when he's trying to deliver information to somebody that's, well, he he's repeating line history. With. He's repeating history. He gave the same speech to Padme. He's like, well, maybe yeah. the second time it will work. Also, this goes back to what I said about a month and a half ago where I don't understand why he cut off his hand. Also super dramatic, unneeded. Like, why'd you have to cut his hand <laughs> off? What does that have to do with anything? Why'd you have to do that? You could disarm him without cutting his hand off. I actually think that it doesn't make sense that he cuts his hand off from Darth Vader's perspective, but I absolutely get it from a filmmaking perspective. Like, sure, I know sure, why sure. But I'm Darth saying Vader from Darth off, Vader, yeah. which we're talking about. Yeah, why would yeah. you go, son, join me? Never mind. Just kidding. Swink. There goes your hand. <laughs> now you should join me. <laughs> just kidding. Hey, uh, you know, the longer we hear stories about Darth Vader and about the Emperor as well, they always seem to kind of like have it all planned out. Like things maybe didn't go the way you think for the emperor, but then you find out at the end, like, Oh, this was all part of the plan. And Darth Vader's the same way, especially in the books and the comics and stuff. Um, so it makes me wonder, did he plan that how this was going to end was they were going to end on that, like tower hanging out the side of that giant hole on cloud city. Or do you think he's like, I'll just show up and then wherever we end up, we end up. Like, at what point? Well, gonna... he, you have to wonder if he knew about the vacuum that would happen if he hit Luke with those objects and the windows shattered. Like, would he have flown out? Like, I wonder if it happened and then yeah. Luke flies out and he's like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, yeah. I just right. killed him. He's oh, like, yeah. I was just trying to knock him out. I didn't mean to, like, break the window. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's like, kind of what like, I'm thinking. Scurries like, over. I would think that that Vader would know all that stuff. It it is kind of funny though. If you ever watch that again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think as soon as Luke falls off, like Darth Vader, like looks over the edge and he's like, "All right, I'm out of here," <laughs> and he just like walks away. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Welp, all right, another day. <laughs> I'm doing yeah. something else." <laughs> just, he just walks away. I wonder if yeah. I won that eBay sale. That's what he's thinking. Like as he walks away. Yeah, I wonder if they accepted my bid. He's cool. like looking down and he's like, well, that sucks. Oh, there's cookies in the kitchen. <laughs> like, it just walks away. Like. <laughs> and, you know, what? One, one thing I have to think about in terms of, you know, George Lucas always used um, fascism and Nazis as a motif for the bad guys in his movies, especially obviously Indiana Jones. Um, but, you know, like, Were there like people like Hitler. <laughs> like people like Hitler would always make sure that their entrances were huge and grand and big and they looked perfect and they were high up and stuff like that. So maybe Lucas purposely incorporated a lot of that into Vader, how he's always showing up from above and he's walking down a ramp and there's the smoke people and there's are the lined big up, entrance. Yeah. And yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure that is purposely done uh, from that perspective. Uh, but in terms of, uh, you know, Vader, the character, I find it, I, I just find it uh, more entertaining if it's just like he like choreographs all that. He's like, okay, so make sure you have my smoke machines ready and I have to have a big entrance because I'm Darth Vader and people need to see me a certain way uh, or else they're going to overthrow me. Like he, there's always that fear on the dark side. Like you want to make sure you're as menacing as possible. Right, and right, right, right. <laughs> Or he doesn't have any clue at all and everybody else is trying to make his entrance as grand as possible, but... <laughs> He's just lucky that they care so much. Like all the stormtroopers are like, go now. And he's like, now, now, walk now. <laughs> Where? Why the, is there the door? fog here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't see anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh boy. You actually I mean, don't know it, but there's a, there's a stage hand stormtrooper talking into his helmet. And we actually, we see one scene of it. <laughs> When when Han Solo shoots down and knocks his TIE fighter out of the trench run, we cut to Darth Vader, and he's trying to hear that stage manager stormtrooper. He says, what? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> he's like tapping his ear. Like, I yeah. can't hear anything. I can't. What? Sir, sir, Talk you have louder. a two o'clock. Sir, sir, you have a yeah. two o'clock. They're waiting. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, this it's, was a fun uh, discussion. Yeah, yeah, James. One thing I wanted to bring up because you're the biggest comic book person here is there. It's a there's a much a much more literal approach to him personally being dramatic uh, with like constant reflections of Padme and how things could have been and nightmares and that sort of thing, right? Yes and no. Honestly, he doesn't really like talk about that stuff. Usually, if that stuff gets brought up, it's like, for instance, in the the uh, Lords of the Sith novel. He's thinking about it, but then Sidious will bring it up and says, like, I know what you're thinking about. And he's like, uh, they mean nothing to me, you know, kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Sounds um, familiar. So, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I made that up. So maybe I'm subconsciously pulling from uh, other Star Wars. But well, what about how Palpatine gave him uh, Padme's ship and Vader had it all destroyed up because of his memories about it like it you know the palpatine takes part in that too i guess trying to like stoke those old memories to make sure he stays in the darkness of all that yeah it reminds him what terrible things he did like nothing's worse than someone constantly reminding you how you messed up that's a dark place yeah it's I almost like that palpatine time wants to make someone. sure vader stays dramatic yeah like, right. you're not you know, happy are you it's weird though because <laughs> some some of the times like i said some of the times that uh, that Vader is put in that position, he kind of like does it to himself. I'm particularly thinking of one where like somebody was out to kill Darth Vader and he was like, oh, it uh, clearly this came from Sidious. This is a, a training thing. He just hired a dude to come and try to kill me. And it turned out that like Sidious didn't do that. So it was like Darth Vader putting like training on himself. Like he mm-hmm. thought uh-huh. this was a, mm-hmm. this was a mission um, and it didn't end up being a mission. Spoiler, if you're not that far in the comics. <laughs> it wasn't Palpatine. We thought so, it was. Guys, we are coming up on time here, but I guess you know we had a lot of fun with this, and we approached it from different angles, from literally being dramatic to theatrical to entrances to his puns and all that stuff. So I guess overall closing thoughts, do you guys think Darth Vader is dramatic, and what aspect of Darth Vader do you think he falls in line with in terms of being dramatic. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I keep I... going back to that dinner scene. Like, what was the point of that? <laughs> like, the only thing I can think of is like a dad like trying to make the boyfriend feel bad. Like, that mm-hmm. is the only thing I can think of. Like, why would... Because I nowadays, movies and TV are a lot darker. And I can tell you right now, mm-hmm. they just shoot Han. And that would be the end of it. You know, right? Um yeah. I don't know. It, I think that's the dramatics. Like, he's always playing these mind games with people. Like, he's always making them second guess their actions, second guess, you know, what they're doing, um, and, like, playing games with them. Like, I think mm-hmm. that's his amusement, is, like, playing games with people, which is pretty messed up, and only dramatic people do that. <laughs> Perhaps you think you're being treated unfairly? Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Who says that? <laughs> Yeah, it's he weird knows saying, no one's gonna say yes. <laughs> yeah, it's weird you're saying playing games. I I think of him more as like just manipulative. I guess that's playing games, but like not in a fun way of like I need to pull the strings here to make this. Do I'm this saying fun for, for yeah. him. Yeah, I yeah I don't know. Um, he's I got no limbs, James. This is all he has. <laughs> I keep that's picturing Darth Vader in a Snickers commercial, where like yeah. the, you know you're they hungry. ask him something, he's like no. Stop it, you know, and all this other stuff. And then they're like, Darth, are you hungry? Like, have a Snickers or whatever. And then he's not so dramatic after that. He turns back into Hayden Christensen, like the yeah. actor. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. <laughs> I need to do that. Um, so, James, do you, uh, where do you fall in this? Do you think he is at all? Do you think we're hamming it up too much? Uh, what, what aspect of Vader do you find uh, lines up with this? I think he is uh, dramatic from a filmmaking perspective, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's him like being dramatic as his personality. Like I don't think he like plans things out. Um, Cause I, mm-hmm. in real life, you know, you can, you can be that way you can say things a certain way or wear power shirts, you know, to kind of 
put yourself in a position where you're like more of a leader. And I don't think Darth Vader thinks of himself that way. And I don't think he does things to kind of present himself that way. I think the character just does things and he is that way. Um, But when you kind of take a step back and look at it, like it's like, he's not a real person. Then you're like, yeah, you're kind of dramatic. (laughs) You're kind of (laughs) being a diva ish. Yeah, see, I, I see it almost as he's still that insecure person who's trying to prove how his worth, because um, he's always going to be underneath Palpatine up until the end, obviously. Um, and Just kill I, him. I, Why do you have him there? Yeah, and, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I just feel like he's always making sure people know it. Um, and whether it's you know what he says, what he does, like if I choke this guy out and smash his skull into this pillar, and all these people see it. They're gonna know exactly who's in charge. Like he didn't have to do what he did in, the, in that situation, but he did it anyway. Um, same thing with his entrances; they're always big and grandiose, and like, okay, everyone stop and look. Vader's here. Um, and again, it goes to that whole dictator thing, and it's always the insecure ones that need to do that. So I think that is a it is a character thing, the theatrics of it. Uh, so it, it probably is deliberate. Um, so, but but I, I find it interesting because if he wasn't, then he wouldn't be as cool of a character. Like if Darth, like Luke just walked into the carbon chamber and Vader's just standing there like, hey, let's do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be as cool. But, you know. What if he never meant to be that dramatic? It just kind of happened. Like everybody else was scared of him. So they lined up all the stormtroopers. And when he got off, he's like, Oh shoot! They're like all lined up for me. This is sick. I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, that, that, this, this is just cool, you know. Don't trip on your cape. Don't trip on your cape. Don't trip <laughs> yeah, on your cape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, next time you guys watch like Empire and Return of the Jedi, just uh, every time Vader says "good," just um, think of think of me, please. <laughs> and when he says "what," think of me. <laughs> and when he says. Kylo Ren, you're my favorite grandson. Think of Lacey. No, think of me when you're oh. like, why is he listening to this old dude? He could slice this guy in half like <laughs> yeah, <that's> years true. <laughs> ago. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, we didn't really see any of the Emperor uh, until he walks down that little ramp with his cane. And people were probably like, are you kidding me? This that's guy? That's what I thought when I was little. Yeah. I was like, so this grandpa is running all this? <laughs> yeah. Good points. All right. Well, what do you guys think? Do you guys think Darth Vader dramatic? Is he theatrical? Is he emo? Is he personally dramatic? Is he purposefully dramatic? Let us know in the comments. Hit us up on Twitter, even with some gifts or examples or quotes or clips. Do it all because Vader's the best. And this is just one of the reasons why. So we hope you enjoyed the discussion. Obviously, it was a fun one. We don't always get too serious here. But now it's time for a little more fun. This, this, I don't know if this is fun, John. It, well, it won't be for you, but it was your, this topic know, was your I know, idea. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So it is time to see which of your tweets we chose in Resistance Transmissions. Lacey, what do you got? <laughs> okay, guys. So for this week's Resistance Transmissions, uh, John so kindly based this off my idea last week, which was what went through Han's mind after Kylo Ren removed the lightsaber blade and Han touched his face? I love that you, now I'm picturing like the shink and you're just mm. like, oh, oh, like everybody yep. felt that, right? Um, mm. So we asked you guys what Han thought. First, this is an honorable mention that isn't on the sheet, but um, I wanted to give the quote of what's actually in the novel before we go into shenanigans. Um, so Scavenger's Horde actually said the quote from the book, which was, quote, Han forgave his son for what he had done. He prayed someday his son would forgive him in turn. So I want to start that off with a more of a positive note that Han forgave Kylo or Ben doing this. Well, you should read the first transmission. I know. I'm going to. I, so I read these live, guys. I haven't read these yet. Um, so (laughs) for... I want to thank. I want to thank. Um, that was a podcast who sent that, right? Yep, Scavengers Horde. Yep. I want to thank them for posting the Jason Fry interpretation of what happened in that situation. Sure, it's the novelization, right? No, is yep. that Jason Fry? Yep. No, it was uh, Alan Foster wrote Force Awakens. Oh, the Force Awakens. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Sorry, I thought it was Jason Fry. My bad. It's okay. Alan Foster. Alan Foster's point of view. Yes. 
which is approved by Lucasfilm, <laughs> which is canon. All right, so. Except, except when Ray met Poe at the end. But yeah, whatever. I, uh... All right, <laughs> so the first one is more 5150 at more 5150, and they said, I'm sorry, son, for all my failings. Please forgive me. I love you. Oh, my God. My chest hurts after reading that. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I, I don't have this. <laughs> I don't have this feeling at all. Really? Like, Not that, even after last shot, last shot where he's like talking about how he's a bad dad and like how he no. wanted to be better. And then in Solo when he's talking about the, the ship with... Uh, Lando and he's saying my dad used to make these ships and he goes did you have a good relationship with your dad and he goes nah not really like none of that goes back into this for you I'm sure it probably does but I'm kind of with John on the like it's his interpretation I don't I don't know maybe it's my interpretation but I just don't I just don't see it being so sappy like I know it's supposed to be like a All sad right, James. moment but Question I'm for sorry, you. John, son. you can answer this he now. Just, he just stabbed him like I'm okay, sorry so son for all my you're... feelings if your son impaled you, now I can ask both of you this. If your son <laughs> impaled you through the chest with a lightsaber, what mm-hmm. would your last thought to them be? I don't My know. My son what truly the... is dead. What did Marvin Gaye <laughs> think? It wouldn't be it wouldn't be like I love you or it wouldn't be something of love, it would be something of hatred. No. I don't know. I'd be I... like I'm dying now. I just got murdered. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it would just be more of like the gravity of the situation. Like, I think your brain would just start going like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. Is this really happening?" Yeah. He just really James did is like this. Bennett. No, yeah. yeah, I don't think it's more like, like, man, I really messed up as a father. Also, I'm falling right now. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. Anyway, we can move on to the All next right. one. As next our, one is, I guess, our interpretation. Frank Valenti at Frank Valenti 71. And he said, if Ben has a beard, it would probably be patchy. All the stormtroopers would call him patchy behind his back. (laughs) Hey, look, there goes patchy. Oh, patchy is upset again. Patchy is the reason we can't have nice things. (laughs) What? This reminds me of like, Matt straight up sucks. Like, if they had a yeah. name yeah. for Kylo Ren, it'd just be patchy. So, first of all, it wouldn't grow in patchy because you can see in some of the scenes how, like, black his mustache is that he has to, like, constantly probably shave every day. So, I don't think it would come in patchy, but I appreciate that you really went for the patchy. Yeah, his goatee really grows in well when after he cuts off, shaves off his head. No. They did that. It was a thing. In a drawing. In a drawing. (laughs) All right, next. Oh, God. Okay. Andrew Staley at Deuce underscore Staley says, I feel he was thinking about letting Leia down and just calling back the memories of Ben as a child. So I have to laugh because one of the things that my husband hates about The Force Awakens is he hates that Leia sent Han into the scenario. (laughs) And he always is like, why did he go? He, I would have been like, no, I'm not going over there. And like, mm-hmm. he goes into this whole thing about how Leia's like, Han, save our son. And Matt's like, no, I will not. No, absolutely not. <laughs> so that's what I thought of with this. But Luke's a Jedi. You're his father. He's like, yeah, and I'm not a Jedi. Send yeah, Luke. like, I'm out. <laughs> he just flies think- off like in Solo where he's like, I got a bunch of guys in the ship. Han just leaves. Yeah, he just takes off. I think every married man knows why Han felt he had to walk out onto that (laughs) platform with no rails to his Sith son. I know he's not Sith, but uh, he's even back on Dakar. She's like, if you see our son, bring him back. You can see it on his face. He's like, crap. (laughs) <laughs> I hope I don't I hope I don't see him yeah exactly and I would be the person like you're gonna even, go get him even in the scene you see him and it's not he I, to me he doesn't have this look of ben. like oh my god there he is he's more like oh crap there he is oh man he uh, actually showed up I'm not kidding she's gonna know I'm lying if she says did you see our son I just say <laughs> no <laughs> well, it's he's gonna the know. actual 
<laughs> the actual audio track of the line initially was as follows. <sighs> ben! <laughs> <laughs> What if, what if because Kylo Ren had his helmet on, he couldn't hear him? And, and Han's like, Ben! Ben! Hey, Ben! Take that thing off! Ben! Ben's over there like, listening to music. After him. He's, he's listening like, oh, he to, like, hear me. I'll tell Panic I at tried. the Disco. He, like, he's gets all the way up the to him. <laughs> no, he gets all the way up to him, and he, like, taps him on the shoulder, and Kylo Ren's like, huh, and he, like, spins around. And that's how he dies? Him. He falls? Yeah, cuts him in half, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, let's oh, keep rolling. Geez. Okay, Harrison Chris Ford Agar. has the exact same face, like, <laughs> So, Chris Agar from at Chris Agar 90, our friend from Screen Rant, says, Kira was right. I am I am the good guy, and it cost me big time. <laughs> For Oof, sure. God, guys. Brutal. Woof. Brutal. You're the good guy. Uh, next is James Otron at James Marsh 83. And he said, quote, now I know how the Tauntaun felt. <laughs> John, do J- the Tauntaun sound. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I just like the name James Marsh. More like James <clears throat> Darsh. <laughs> all, right. all right it's from south park. park gosh you guys are bad on references parkland <laughs> parkland so Dan Marsh. i'm sorry so far he's brought up Polly shore and south park i think it's like what 98 right now <laughs> like, yeah. what? so parkland strong at wide awake i'm wide awake 1981 says it's no good to die alone rio was right Oh, see, this is what I said a while ago. Like, that's so sad. And he Rough. touches his hey, face. Hey, you want to hear a hot like take? Rio. This resistance uh, transmission sucks. <laughs> it's all oh. sappy. I love yeah. it. So pumpkin face Anthony. I don't know what that <laughs> is. that like you have a spray tan, you wear a jack-o'-lantern, you ate a lot of pumpkin pie. Anyway. This isn't sappy at, at all. So pumpkin at face Anthony, Anthony says... <laughs> <laughs> at Anthony Taylor underscore says I should have married Kira. Ooh, mm. there Ooh. we go. Yeah, no, Leia's awesome, yeah. and Kira betrayed yeah. him. Corey Next should is- have dumped Topanga for Lauren. Whoa, that is a hot take. <laughs> That's a deep cut. Oh my god, this is, <laughs> this is a Star Wars podcast. Okay, yeah, you said William I Kira. Andrade Andrade. At Sir Darth Uno says, I knew that old man and that farm boy were trouble. That <laughs> just made sure. me think of Taylor Swift. Where it's, I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Anybody? No? Good song? Okay. I mean, next is song. pumpkin emoji, the tomb where it happens. <laughs> at Spooky Matt, Twitter. At Matt Greenfield. And he said, quote, I'm not mad. Just disappointed. just disappointed. I like that one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the worst thing a parent could ever say to you is, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> that was my second that was that was my second favorite one. Oh my god. Okay, is this next, next one, one is your first favorite? Gingus yeah. Dingus at Gingus Dingus. Way to get, get your, your handle, handle, Gingus. And he said, I hope Chewie remembers to clear my browser history. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Read it again if you can, because I I don't even know if that was audible. Sorry, guys. I said, it's, quote, I hope Chewie remembers to clear my browser history. (laughs) <laughs> that's gotta i'm put i gotta put that one in the hall of fame that has to be one of my oh, favorite responses that is. to resistance transmissions what was <laughs> so the good. other one that was so good i couldn't stop laughing oh it was when laura santenka was like please someone tell me yeah 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 all right guys thank you so much for giving your resistance transmissions i hope you're still with us i know that took a little time to go through but i hope it was <laughs> worth the wait um if you want to be a part of the show Check back Wednesdays or Thursdays for hashtag resistant transmissions. John will put up a crazy, wacky situation. 
<laughs> and you can give us what you think your answer is. Funny, creative answers get the uh, get to be on the show. So yeah, back to you, John. All right, guys. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed those. Thanks for sticking around. We got a little silly, but that happens from time to time. Can't always be so serious about the space operas, right? Thank you so much for uh, being a part of the show with us today. We love those things. Keep them coming, as Lacey said. And thanks for always being subscribed to us. If you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed on either iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Uh, We have some interesting stuff coming up in the future on YouTube, hopefully. So stay tuned for that. More announcements coming. Uh, Make sure you uh, head to our website, StarWarsNewsNet.com, for all of your latest news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. If you guys want to support the show right now, the only way to do so is some of our merch at tpublic.com slash user slash resistance broadcast. We have about 40 designs up there. You can get on a mug, sticker, t-shirt, all sorts of stuff. So we appreciate that support. And it's cool stuff anyway. Um, What am I forgetting here? I think that's all that stuff. So you guys can find me, John Hoey, on Twitter at Johnny Hoey, and writing and editing over at StarWarsNewsNet.com. James Bainey. How about you, sir? Uh, You can find me laughing at how you guys brought up the Emperor being just so old. And (laughs) I I couldn't help but keep going back. Every time you mentioned it, I think even his theme song is old. It can't get off the couch. It's like, uh, <laughs> 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 if you want to no. talk to me on Twitter or Instagram, it's at Myra Chunks, M-I-R-A-H-T-R-U-N-K-S. Awesome, man. Lacey, how about you? People can find me clearing my browser history, oh. which I'm curious... <laughs> What if the emperor cleared his browser history? Um, or you can find me on Twitter at Lacey Gillerin talking about Star Wars and other cool stuff. Hope to see you on the interwebs. Maybe next week's <laughs> Lacey, resistance what, transmission. What do you will, think? Will be... What do you think what? the contingency plan was <laughs> for the emperor? <laughs> yeah the 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 big like post. The aftermath novels contingency plan. <laughs> Cut to me with a clipboard. Sir, sir, are you there? You're two clocks here. Sir. <laughs> sir, do you want me to clear your browser history? <laughs> if the Did you clear my browser history, good. <laughs> if the king falls in a hollow chest or whatever, whatever it was, then all the pieces go to. <laughs> Maybe next week our resistance transmissions could be what was on Han Solo's browser history. Oh. <laughs> how how oh, to smuggle no. Rathars. Like <laughs> um but anyway, we're we're up against it here, guys. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for listening. And for those of you who stick to the end of the show, obviously you get this uh, ridiculous funness. I don't even know if that's a word, but we appreciate it. Good times as always, and enjoy your weekends. We will see you guys on Monday morning with another new episode right here on the Resistance Broadcast. We'll see you around, kids. (laughs) 